It is good to pause in the midst of everything, in the midst of our to-do lists and our worries, in the midst of the endless, inescapable political advertising and other content that flows our way as residents of a swing state. And remember what is good. So today we are pausing in the midst of all of everything to celebrate the animals, our companions, our neighbors, the other beings with which we share this planet. So we will offer them our blessings, we will mourn, and we will celebrate. So come let us gather together, come let us worship together. The Calling of the Creatures by Ian Riddle. Come hoof and trunk and tail and horn and paw and wing and claw. Come bird and reptile, mammal born, all full of nature's law. Bring bark and crow and ribbit too and silent stare and hiss. Bring purr and trill and warble, warble too and voice no ear can miss. We gather here, each life and all, to celebrate and sing, to honor creatures large and small, tis holiness we bring. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to People's Church. Whether this is your first time at People's Church, you come every Sunday or anywhere in between, I welcome you. My friend Snack would also like to extend a special welcome to the non-humans among us today. I think that's what he meant. It just sounded like s to me. <laughs> but anyway. Welcome to all the animals. Whether you're here or watching over Zoom, whether you're flesh and blood or filled with stuffing. Welcome, everyone. And a few announcements as we begin. This is a service for all ages, all beings. So we are expecting people to stay in this space for our service. If you came with a 
a child or a more than human animal, please take good care of them. Perhaps they need to go outside if they get too noisy. Perhaps they might need something else. Um, please help them get what they need this morning. Mm -hmm. Following our service today is the art wall reception for all of this art on our wall and on our wall by church member Ann Terwilliger. So please stay and admire and have a little snack. Uh, the naming contest for our stuffing and yarn um, mnemonic device is ongoing, so our Jet Pig, which helps us remember our values of justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, and generosity, with love at the center. That co naming contest is ongoing. There's a box in the in the foyer, and or you can send a naming idea to staff. And soon we will have a vote to pick the name of this of this stuffed animal. This coming Thursday afternoon, there will be a postcard writing party here at the church hosted by the League of Women Voters. Come and write postcards to people in our community who might need some extra encouragement to vote this November. This is a nonpartisan effort and it starts at 4 p.m. Next weekend is our UU Climate Justice Revival. We will be joining with churches all across the country to imagine a new way forward in the midst of our ongoing climate crisis. There'll be a potluck here at noon on Saturday, followed by programming from one to five. It's inspiring and hopeful. Please come. We are doing this in partnership with our cousins at the UU Community Church in Portage. There's, please sign up. There's a sign up online or in the foyer. Please come. And there's childcare and a program for our children. And the service next Sunday will be part of this climate justice revival. So come to as much of it as you are able. All of it will be inspiring. And now, let us sing. Yes, I invite you to rise and body your spirit to sing our opening song together. I'd like to call Mara up to light our chalice. All Animals Are Our Relatives by Florence Caplow. We light this chalice in honor of the animal realm, furred and hoofed, two-legged, four-legged, many-legged, fanged and clawed, gentle and fierce, wild and tame. 
may we remember that all animals are our relatives, worthy of our care and respect. Today, I want to tell you a story about my cat, whose name is June. About three years ago, I was ready to go for a hike in the woods, and I heard, meow, 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 meow. I said, well, where is that sound coming from? And I followed it all the way across my very busy road, behind my mailbox, in the ditch was a little tiny kitty with a big scar on her lip. Like someone maybe threw her out of the car into the ditch and she landed on her face. And that day, I picked up that little tiny kitty with that little scar on her lip and I took her on a hike with me. She rode on my shoulder. You see a little scar on her lip? Here, I'll pass them around. You can look at them. So this little kitty, this just happened to be the month of June. And my girlfriend at the time said, I think we should name this kitty June. I said, okay, that's a good name for her. So June came to live with us. And she was an adventure cat. She loved to climb trees. <laughs> She was very adventurous. Are you kind of like a cat? She loved to hang in the hammock. She was quite a snuggly little kitty. Her favorite thing was to get under the covers in my bed and snuggle in, especially on cold winter nights. She would tuck right in. She was really helpful when I did puzzles. She liked to help put all the pieces on the floor, which wasn't actually very helpful. <laughs> so one day, last, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say that my friend wouldn't want to come over because she's definitely allergic to cats. Okay, some people are definitely <laughs> allergic to cats. So one day this summer, I was in bed and I heard a crash. And I jumped out of bed and I said, what is going on? And I found June laying on the floor in Valen's bedroom and she could not walk. I don't know what happened. I took her to the emergency vet and they did x-rays and June broke her pelvis in four places. Broke her like that's her hips, her whole body. The vet said it seemed like she was jumping and she was stretched out long and something slammed into her hips and crushed them. She thought she might lose her back leg. She, she wasn't sure she was gonna make it. I took June home and I put her in a big dog crate in the middle of my living room. And I gave her medicine every single day, every eight hours, some pain medicine, some all kinds of things to try to help her heal and fed her and changed her pee pads because she couldn't quite use her litter box for two weeks saying, do you want to live, June? Can you get better? And I went back to the vet and we did new x-rays and the vet said, great news, her pelvis is healing really well. It looks like June might be okay, but we we'll have to see, time will tell. Her nerves take a long time to heal. So keep her inside, but let her out of the dog crate because 
we don't want her muscles to atrophy or get really weak. We want her to be able to walk a little bit, but not too much, because we want her bones to heal. So she probably shouldn't go outside, keep her in, but let her walk around. So every morning I would get up and let her out of the dog crate and I'd give her her medicine and I'd give her her food and she would go to every door in my house and try to get out. She went to the front door. She went to the back door. She went to the dog door. She went to the cat door. She went to the garage door and she'd bang her head and I'd say, no, you need to and you can't go outside. You need to stay in here until you can heal. But she didn't like that. And then she would go under my bed and lay there for 12 hours a day and not move, not eat, not drink, not go do anything. And every night I would put her back in her crate and every morning I would let her out again. And after a week of that, one day she went out of the crate, banged her head against the door to the garage hard enough, which was shut but not clicked tight, that she left into the night. And Balin and I looked everywhere for that little June. We went to all of our neighbors' barns and looked through the hay. We went to all everybody's sheds and we went into the woods and into the bushes and we said, June, you need your medicine, you need your food, where are you? No June. Every day for a month. And I said, I think June is gone. And you guys remember Griffey, my puppy who died last year when he got hit by a car? All of my grief for losing Griffey seemed to get all mixed up with my grief for not being able to find June. And it was really hard. And one day, an entire month later, June showed up at the back door. Hi, I'm really hungry. <laughs> I said, June, where have you been? What have you been doing? What is going on? She was so skinny. She was starving. She came in and I said, do you want some food? And she said, yum, 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 yum. yes, I'm really hungry. She spent an entire week in my bed, sleeping and eating. That's all she did. Sleep and eat and sleep and eat. <laughs> Until she started feeling better. She started getting her old self back. Now one of the really funny things about June is that her favorite toy has always been a small hair tie, like you have on the ends of your braids. She would play with it, but she wouldn't just play with it like cats do. She would carry it around in her mouth, and the only time she would drop it is when she went to eat. So every day there were hair ties in the cat food bowl. I said, June, you are so silly carrying that around in your mouth. There's a kitty that looks a lot like June. You can put the picture of June up if you want on the screen. and Everybody can see what she looks like. She's a, just a little tiger calico cat. So the thing about you met June when you were at my house. The other thing about June is that she was a really great huntress. I love that she was a great mouser. But this past week, I was spent three whole days in Zoom, on Zoom. Do you know what Zoom is? Yeah. It's something you don't want to spend three whole days on in the course of one week. And June decided to come in. She brought me a live chipmunk in her mouth while I was on Zoom, which ran underneath the couch that I was sitting on in my Zoom meeting in a small group of people trying to catch this chipmunk and take it back outside. So that was Saturday. Tuesday, I was on another Zoom meeting. June brought in another chipmunk and put it in the living room. I might have been the same chipmunk. I said, you're not very bright if she keeps catching you. So I had to run around the whole living room with a container to catch this chipmunk and take it back outside. And then Thursday, I was on another Zoom meeting and June says, you're not a very good hunter, mom. I better help you out. And she brought me another chipmunk. <laughs> I can't even find that one. I don't, I think it might have went in the basement. Hopefully it can get out from there. And the main reason that I know that June is back is because every day I go to Phil, 
the cat food bowl. There's a hair rubber band in there. And that just warms the cockle shells of my heart. So what June has taught me this summer is how to love without attachment. And how to have my heart big and full and soft and open. And even when I feel a whole lot of grief and sadness, I know that it's love. That's the most important thing. So I just keep on loving June, even though she's a crazy cat. <laughs> and that is my story about June. <laughs> what happened? We're going to go sit back down now. Yeah. You have something to say. Okay. In addition to our chalice flame here at People's Church, there are chalice flames bur burning today in the Millwood neighborhood and in Matawan. What a gift to be together in time, even when we are not together in space. People's people are generous people. One of the ways our people are generous is in caring for this plot of land that we occupy, this 22-ish acres in Ashtamo. There are dedicated teams of folks who water, who are trying to make this rain garden, rain garden, who tend our memorial garden and our labyrinth and who mow the lawn and who weed and who make the terrace plantings out front look as beautiful as possible who develop land management plans and deal with invasive species. And it creates a sanctuary for us, places to go for fun and for spiritual practice and in times of grief, but also for all of the other living beings in this space. We see so many turkeys and deer and groundhogs and butterflies and bugs and birds of all sorts who make a home on this patch of earth that we tend with them in mind as well, of our, as well as ourselves. So thank you for all of the ways you are generous. This is the moment where I invite you to continue to be the generous people that you are. The offering will now be received. Hey, if you know this one, sing along. Thank you. 
Please join me in giving thanks for all that sustains us. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. Our first reading is from Firefly Redux in World of Wonders by Amy Nizukumatatil. Where does one stand to take care of these living things amid the dire and daily news of climate change and reports of another animal or plant vanishing from the planet? How can one even imagine us getting back to a place where we know the names of the trees we walk by every single day? A place where a bird navigating a dewy meadow is transformed into something more specific, something we can hold on to by feeling its name on our tongues. Brown Thrasher, or that big tree, Catalpa. Maybe what we can do when we feel overwhelmed is to start small. Start with what we have loved as kids and see where that leads us. For me, what a single firefly can do is this. It can light a memory I thought was long lost in roadsides overrun with Queen Anne's lace and goldenrod a peach pie cooling in the window of a distant house. It might make me feel like I'm traveling again to a gathering of loved ones, dining seaside on a Greek island, listening to cicada song and a light wind rustling the mimosa trees. A single firefly might be the spark that sends us back to our grandmother's backyard to listen for whippoorwills, the spark that sends us back to splashing in an ice cold creek bed with our jeans rolled up to our knees until we shudder and gasp, our toes fully wrinkled. In that spark is a slowdown and tenderness, such a tiny light for such a considerable task. Its luminescence could very well be the spark that reminds us to make a most necessary turn, a shift and a swing and a switch toward cherishing this magnificent and wondrous planet. You might think of a heartbeat your own, a child's, someone else's, or some thing's heart. And in that slowdown, you might think it's a kind of love, and you'd be right. St. Francis and the Sow by Galway Canal. The bud stands for all things, even for those things that don't flower, for everything flowers from within of self-blessing. Though sometimes it is necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness, to put a hand on its brow, of the flower and retell it in words and touch, it is lovely until it flowers again from within of self-blessing. As St. Francis put his hand on the creased forehead of the sow and told her in words and in touch, blessings of earth on the sow and the sow began remembering all down her thick length from the earthen snout all the way through the fodder and slops to the spiritual curl of the tail. From the hard spininess spiked out from the spine down through the great broken heart to the sheer blue milken dreaminess spurting and shuddering from the 14 teats into the 14 mouths sucking and blowing beneath them the long perfect loveliness of sow so now we are going to do our animal blessing ritual and sometimes the question comes, 
why do we do this? And while I believe that every good ritual holds enough meaning that many people can create many different meanings out of it, I will give you just one meaning today. Then you can find your own. It's fine. I believe we offer blessings to help us remember what is lovely, what is worthy of care and kindness, what is worthy of our devotion. So the animals are fine whether we bless them or not. Let's be honest. They probably don't care. They probably think it's weird to be here today. But it is good for us as beings that share our lives with animals to remember how precious they are, to pause amidst the everything and take a moment to say, you are lovely. I hope you have a life filled with health and with joy. So now we will offer our blessings. If you have an animal <laughs> living or a stuffed animal, or may, perhaps a picture of an animal that you have with you or on your phone, or the name of an animal in mind, I invite you to come forward up one of the side aisles Diane and I will be here the, near the center offering blessings with word and with touch. And if you are with us on Zoom right now or watching later on YouTube, I invite you perhaps to have your own ritual with the animals that are dear to you or to type their names into the chat box so we might all know them together. So let us offer our blessings. <sighs> What a blessing to have so many beautiful friends with us at church today and the web of life. The whole, whole of creation joining us in this room today. So we are blessed to have those who are living among us, but as we all know, loving an animal whose lives are too often shorter than our own also brings opportunity for grief and it's so important because for me love and grief are two two hands of the same body and so to acknowledge the grief and to allow that a place to be is really important so this is a, a poem for all of our losses for those we miss for those long gone for those who we last held in our arms, in our hands, and in our hearts, we pray. We pray for memories to stay strong, memories of words and warmth, of actions and stillness. We pray for love, shared and lived. Love to remain with us and them, and for that to become enough. We pray for the courage to put our feet on the floor when we wake, to move through the day as if we cared. Oh, love that holds us all. Hold on to me while I hold on to that which I have lost. Amen. I do not know where we go when we die, and I do not know what the soul is or what death is or when, or why. What I know is that the song once sung cannot be unsung, and the life once lived cannot be unlived, and the love once loved cannot be unloved. So I, take, I invite us to take a few moments to just be with and acknowledge the grief the grief that we feel when a beloved pet dies, if we see an animal who's been hit by a car on the side of the road, when we recognize the suffering that occurs when a habitat has been destroyed or polluted. When we acknowledge the immense suffering caused by human apathy and greed to our fellow species on this planet every 
single day. As we acknowledge the losses, we feel the grief, and we sit with our hearts soft and open in the rawness of it all, we invite a moving of that grief through us. And with time, we invite a healing of our hearts. Khalil Gibran says, if you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide onto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. And now I'm going to light a candle and invite those of you who wish to come up and light a candle in honor of a beloved pet who has passed or an ecosystem for those who are suffering. And you may quietly whisper to yourself their name or name that, that animal or ecosystem as you light your candle. So as you so desire, you may come up on each side and light a candle and go down the center.
May we hold the grief as well as the joy in our hearts and in our community and support one another being held in the larger love that holds us all. May it be so. May it be so. And now we're closing this time of gratitude and blessing for animals with a with a litany so diane and i will speak and then we hope you all will respond with we offer our blessing to all of the animals here with us today we offer our blessing to the pets and to other animals that we have known who have taught us about love tenderness and responsibility we, we offer, offer our blessing. To the animals that make their home here at People's Church, the turkeys, deer, bugs, and birds, to others who make their home in our woods, and in the nooks and crannies of this building, <laughs> we offer our blessing. To all of the animals who work, guarding or guiding, pulling plows, we, we offer, offer our, our blessing. blessing. To the animals who give their lives for us as food and clothing and to advance our understandings, we offer our blessings. To all the imaginary creatures, the unicorns and the dragons, and fictional characters who teach us to dream and to imagine and to question, we offer our blessings. To the animals who have gone extinct, dinosaurs and dodos and too many others. We honor your memory and we offer our blessing. To all the animals who suffer from cruelty, from loss of habitat, from climate change, we pledge ourselves to make the world more hospitable for all beings and we offer our blessing. To all animals everywhere, near and far, we offer our blessing. And now we sing. I invite you to rise and body your spirit to sing along to this song. Church is a community that supports one another in good times and in hard times. One of the ways we do this is by taking time when we gather together to share the joy and sorrow of our lives. So if you have a joy, sorrow, or other milestone, and, and now for a, a pretty dramatic tonal shift, we are ending our service today 
with the chicken dance. So I'm hoping there are a few people who who know this dance who might be able to come up here, be careful getting around the fire, and be up here on the steps and help us all learn the chicken dance today. I know you're gonna help us learn the chicken dance. And then I invite everybody else to get into whatever posture helps you chicken dance your very best. Um, which is probably standing, but you might have come up with some sort of innovative way and I'm excited to learn it. <laughs> people dance. It's all good. So as we end the service today, may we carry with us our love and our grief and our joy out to all the animals, all of the more than human beings who need our care today. So let us go in peace and go in love.